Welcome to Esoteric Detective, my name is Emma. Have you ever wondered if reality, that is the world that you see around you, is really real? Well, stay tuned as we bring you 6 things that might prove we are living in a simulated reality. Number 6. The idea that we are living in a matrix, is taken seriously, by real scholars. At least recently, it has. Ever since famed philosopher Nick Bostrom, of the University of Oxford, made the first serious academic exploration of the simulation argument. The simulations he considered are different from those in movies like The Matrix, in which the world is simulated but the conscious minds are not. That is, where biological human beings with human brains interface with the simulated world. In Bostrom's simulations, human consciousness is just another figment of the simulation. That is, ghosts in a strange machine. Nick has given examples as to the type of simulation that he thinks we could be in, as something either run by our future selves, or more likely, something run by maybe a superintelligence, that has made a simulation universe. Humans just being byproducts of particle interactions on a cosmic scale, with the humans never coming to exist outside the simulation but only exist in digital space. Number 5. The idea that we could be living in a virtual reality without knowing it, is taken seriously by scientists. As a matter of fact, right now, tests are underway to try and find out once and for all, if we are living in a type of matrix. At the moment physicists are testing for detectable glitches in our reality. That is trying to find glitches that should not be there, as evidence of a computer simulation. This is based upon the research of John D. Barrow, professor of mathematical sciences at Cambridge University, who suggested that an imperfect simulation of reality would contain detectable glitches. Just like your computer, the universe's operating system would need updates to keep working. As the simulation degrades, Dr. John Barrow suggests, we might see aspects of nature that are supposed to be static, such as the speed of light or the fine structure constant that describes the strength of the electromagnetic force. Number 4. The idea that we are living in a simulation seems plausible, given the massive rate at which our computer power is expanding. And the fact that humans are already creating simulations, whether it be in computer games or virtual real worlds, there seems to be a driving desire to create expanded worlds in which we can live and operate. This fact that we want to create worlds, to live within, will no doubt only become more advanced in time, until there becomes a point at which we cannot tell the difference anymore. A simulated world in the future would be much more advanced, but we can only guess as to what humans, could do in say a hundred years, or maybe a hundred thousand. At that point, the advanced computer simulations would be so real they would probably be no different than the real world. People inside the simulations might even make their own simulations, which would lead on to a strange mirror effect with simulations inside simulations. After that, who knows how deep the rabbit hole would really go. Number 4. Our reality, and indeed the greater universe, seems fine-tuned for life, and thus fine-tuned for human beings. It is like it was made, or programmed like that for a reason. That is, life in the universe can only occur when certain universal fundamental physical constants lie within a very narrow range, so that if any of several fundamental constants were only slightly different, the universe would not exist. That is, if you changed any of the natural laws of physics just a small amount, nothing would exist in the universe. Matter would not have been created, gravity would not exist, and maybe not even time itself. The chances that all these natural laws came about and work to make the universe exists is so low, that it is about one in one quintillion chance. The fine tunings, how fine, how fine tuned are they? Most of them are 1% sort of things. In other words, if a thing is 1% uh, different, uh, everything is bad. And a physicist could say, maybe those are just luck. On the other hand, this cosmological constant is tuned to one part and 10 to the 120, 120 decimal places. Nobody thinks that's accidental. That is not a reasonable idea, that something is tuned to 120 decimal places just by accident. 
That's the most extreme example of fine tuning. Number three, what we believe shapes our reality. Evidence for this is shown in the double slit experiment. In the basic version of this experiment, a coherent light source such as a laser beam illuminates a plate pierced by two parallel slits, and the light passing through the slits is observed on a screen behind the plate. The wave nature of light causes the light waves passing through the two slits to interfere, producing bright and dark bands on the screen. The strange part of the experiment is, the way that the light behaves, whether it is particles or waves, is dependent on whether someone is viewing the experiment or not. That is, the light behaves differently when someone is watching. This is a mystery in physics which even today no one understands. But it could make sense, if we were in a simulated reality that is that reality adjusts according to our own choices. Number 2. The idea that we could be living in a virtual reality without knowing it, is taken seriously by scientists. As a matter of fact, right now, tests are underway to try and find out once and for all, if we are living in a type of matrix. According to Discover magazine, physicists can offer us the ability to test whether we live in our own virtual matrix, by studying radiation from space, and looking for changes in those forces that should not appear. That is types of computer glitches. Number 1. Physicists have found computer code in the mathematics of string theory. Namely, while exploring the mathematics of string theory, theoretical physicist James Gates and his researcher discovered something rather interesting buried deep within the mathematical equations of supersymmetry. They found computer code. And it isn't just random ones and zeros. Bizarrely, the code they found is code which is used in computer browser operating system software. Specifically, Block Linear Self Dual Error Correcting Code. Block Linear Self Dual Error Correcting Codes are vital in the exchange of digital information as they monitor code sent and measure it against what's already known, self adjusting as required. When you then try to understand these pictures, you find out that buried in them are computer codes just like the type that you find in a browser when you go surf the web. You're saying <laughs> your attempt to understand the fundamental operations of nature leads you to a set of equations that are indistinguishable from the equations that drive search engines and browsers on yeah, our computers. That is correct. So the wait, wait, I'm still, wait, I have to just be silent for a minute here. <laughs> so you're saying as you dig deeper, you find computer code writ in the fabric of the cosmos into the equations that we want to use to describe the cosmos, yes. Computer code. Computer code, strings of bits of ones and zeros. It's not just sort of resembles computer code, you're saying it is computer code. It's not even just is computer code, it's a special kind of computer code that was invented by a scientist named Claude Shannon in the 1940s. That's what we find very, very deeply inside the equations that occur in string theory and in general in systems that we say are supersymmetric. Did you like the video? If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any ideas or questions you want to share, please do share them in the comments section. And in the meantime, this is Emma, from Esoteric Detective, and thanks for watching.